Coming up on DTNS, they caught the Twitter fisher, they think. NVIDIA might want to buy ARM. Microsoft want, might want to buy TikTok. What is happening? This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, July 31st, 2020 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. Also in Los Angeles, I'm Lamar Wilson. Oh, and uh, I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. We were uh, just talking about the uh, premiere of the NBA and all the tech wizardry they did on that. Also, coffee, because coffee is very important, at least to me. Uh, get that wider conversation in our expanded show, Good Day Internet. Become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. YouTube will discontinue its community captions feature that let viewers add subtitles to videos on September 28th due to what it says is low usage plus spam and abuse issues. However, deaf and hard of hearing creators, also those who used it to translate videos into other languages say this hurts accessibility and also hurts those who can't pay to make their own captions. YouTube told The Verge it would provide creators who have used the feature on at least three videos in the past 60 days, a free six month subscription to subtitling service a Bloomberg sources say Facebook finalized deals with Universal Music Group, Sony Music Entertainment, and Warner Music Group to show music videos on its platforms. Now, Facebook had previously reached agreements with artists and labels to license the use of audio, but didn't have permission to directly host official videos. YouTube is currently the most popular source of music videos on the internet. Ah, so Facebook going after YouTube. U.S. Federal Communications Commission authorized Amazon's plans for its Project Kuiper satellite constellation. This calls for launching 3,236 satellites to provide broadband coverage. The FCC approved the plan on the condition that Amazon does not unduly interfere with previously authorized satellite ventures, with satellites deorbiting within 355 days of completing their assigned mission. The plan approved by the FCC calls for Amazon to launch half its satellites by mid-2026 and the rest by mid-2029. Talked about earnings yesterday, but it is worth repeating that Alphabet reported its first revenue decline in company history last quarter, down 2%. Search revenue was essentially flat from last year due to the pandemic, and other revenue, which includes hardware sales, was up. Google Cloud revenue was up 43%, although it still missed expectations. Google ad revenue was up 5.8% year over year. And other bets, the non-Google businesses like Waymo and Verily, reported an increased loss of $1.12 billion. A quick minor correction, YouTube ad revenue was up 5.8%. What did I say? You said Google. Oh, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> Owned by yes. Google. Yes, not the same respect thing. My, respect my job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as we reported... Uh, Thursday, excuse me, as we reported Thursday, Amazon revenue was up 40% year over year. Some interesting notes from that. Now, AWS was not Amazon's fastest growing segment of the first for the first time. It grew 29% as Amazon says it helped clients cut usage, which cut spending. North America sales rose 43% as people shopped online more, and international sales grew 38%. Amazon's ad business bucked the tra pandemic trend rising 41%, and its subscription revenue, essentially Amazon Prime, rose 29%. Um, Facebook. Daily users of Facebook in the last quarter increased 12% year-over-year to $1.79 billion. Monthly usage across Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram grew 14% to $3.14 billion. I think when I was born, there might not have been that many people on the planet. Uh, Facebook warns that usage will be flat or slightly down next quarter because people are starting to go back to regular life. And that ad boycott in July that saw more than 100 companies pull advertising, well, Facebook reports revenue for the first three weeks of July was in line with Q2's growth rate at 10%. In other words, Facebook doesn't seem to act like they felt it at all. And in fact, the North Face and Heineken say they will return to advertising on Facebook in August. Uh, correction, Tom, there were three people on Earth when you were born? Okay. Uh, Apple smashed expectations Dang. in its earnings report Thursday <laughs> and in an earnings call that followed smashing expectations in a different way. Apple CF, uh, CFO uh, Luca Maestri, how do you pronounce that? Maestri? We'll just say that. Uh, said that compared to the September release of the iPhone 11, the next iPhone is expected to be available a few weeks later. Now, Apple generally never comments on whether it has even has a new iPhone coming. So the delay is less shocking given the disruption to supply chains caused by lockdowns and Qualcomm's report that a client was delaying production. So it's not unprecedented that the 2017 iPhone 10 didn't come out till November. 
Yeah, yeah. so they've done it before. Very interesting, yeah. Microsoft will end support for third-party Cortana skills on September 7th, 2020. And in early 2021, Microsoft plans to discontinue the Cortana apps on iOS and Android and remove the current Cortana functionality from the first generation Surface headphones and give users a $25 gift card in compensation. Microsoft's also going to remove Cortana from the Invoke speakers, turning them into basically just Bluetooth speakers, and those users will get a $50 gift card. All right, let's talk a little more about that Twitter attack. Yeah, a lot has happened since uh, since it posted Thursday that the attack on its admin system, which was earlier this month, was a phone spear phishing attack that targeted a small number of employees. Spear phishing means you know exactly who you're targeting and you have enough personal information about them and trusted contacts to fool them. So it sounds like the attackers, attackers spearfished a few employees to gain basic access to Twitter's intranet, where then they gathered enough information to spearfish employees who had access to the Twitter account support tool, which they then used to add email addresses and reset pa passwords to gain access to actual Twitter accounts. Twitter said, quote, this attack relied on a significant and concerted attempt to mislead certain employees and exploit human vulnerabilities to gain access to our internal systems, end quote. Now, earlier this morning, the FBI, the IRS, the U.S. Secret Service, and Florida law enforcement placed a 17-year-old in Tampa, Florida, under arrest for the phishing attack on Twitter. The suspect has been charged with more than 30 felony charges, including organized fraud, communications fraud, identity theft, and hacking, according to Hillsborough State Attorney Andrew Warren. He'll be charged as an adult and may appear in court Saturday morning. Not clear if he acted alone at this time. The 17-year-old and possible accomplices tried to gain access to 130 accounts. They successfully posted from 45 of them. They accessed the direct messages of 36 of them and downloaded archived data of seven. Yeah, previously Lord Twitter thought it could be up to eight, but uh, they've, they've now said that it's seven. Uh, and they have released the name of this person. Uh, you can find it. We even have a, a link to the press release about it. We're not using it here because... The person is 17, and we, we don't know who else might have acted with him. They say they're not confirming or denying that he acted alone, so they may still yet have other arrests uh, to go with this. But quick work, honestly, uh, mm. in finding this person, and I think it makes me feel better about resisting the idea that this was some kind of state-based attack or that that it was you know th that they were bribing Twitter employees. It sounds like these were young hackers who were really good at social engineering, and that's not unusual. The, the best hacks in history have been done by people in their teens uh, and just figured out how to get somebody on the phone at Twitter and lucked into tricking them into giving them access to internal tools. Once you have access to any internal tool, you can use that to leverage some kind of spoof where you appear to be somebody that you're not because you have the information. You can start gathering all this credible sounding information. So, so my question is, at what, and this is theoretical, but at what point, do obviously we got we got the seventeen, right? But like, at what point do we go after those employees? And I hate to say this, but just for being dumb, like, like how how sophisticated? Which I'm sure we'll find out. Was this social engineering where you are so clueless that you're giving access to internal information? You know, I mean, it's, so it feels like a bribe at that point, like, or or a hey, we have your stuff, give us this info. It's, nat it's natural to think that, but it is, uh, yeah. any one of us who's ever been fished, and I bet you there are people in the audience who have, I certainly have almost been fished, oh, uh, almost. knows sure. that you don't have to be stupid to get fished. So it's easy to fish your way into a system. It's not easy, but it's easier to fish your way into a system by just appearing to be someone you're not. You can spoof a phone number to look like it's coming from HR and say, oh, you know what? We need to reset your password. And somebody who's really distracted, especially stressed out about COVID-19 and working from home and not really maybe thinking suddenly gives someone a piece of information that they think they're giving to a trustworthy source and they're not. Once you have that, Mm. Then you you are able to figure out, like, who's on the support team? What's the phone number of the official support account? Now I can craft a text message that I send to someone saying, hey, this is the official support account for Twitter. Please click on this link to reset your admin access. 
boom, I've got your password. You never even know you got fished at that point. Well, heck, the way you explained it, yeah, that, that's terrifying, actually. Because <laughs> I, I was thinking it's like, oh, they got them to tell them the, the, the secret codes or whatever over the phone. Right, right. But, it yeah, doesn't but... even have to be like that, yeah. Wow. You okay. know, the, the thing about uh, this person and possibly other people, uh, him in particular, being a minor, uh, uh, you know, at least at the time of the attack, and Tom, your point that you know, younger people are really good at this. This is historically, you know, it's it's not like, hey, you know, a kid can hack into Twitter. Then, you know, how 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 clamped down is Twitter? What is their security team even doing? On that side of it, not surprising. What and I'm not like giving anybody a pass at all. This is a really big deal, you know. But at a certain age, when you're maybe looking for, you know, accolades from hacking peers, you know, online because you were able to tweet out something about Bitcoin from Joe Biden's official account. Mm -hmm. And now you got 30 felony charges and you're really young and you got your life ahead of you and you're, you know, you're pretty screwed um, if you end up being, you know, being found guilty of all this. You know, that's where it gets really sad. Yeah. No, you're you're absolutely right. Like it's it was it was done for the lulls, it it sounds like. Uh, and for the rep. And, you know, even getting busted can can sort of enhance your rep, but I'm not sure it's worth it. I would say not. Yeah. I mean, every agency went after them. It was like the fit, wildlife and fishing. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody. Um, so here's the next story. Bloomberg sources say SoftBank is in advanced talks with NVIDIA to buy ARM in a deal possibly worth $32 billion. Now, SoftBank bought ARM in 2016 for $31 billion. The source says NVIDIA is the only company with concrete discuss discussions, and a deal could be done in the next few weeks. Now, NVIDIA mostly makes GPUs. Its Tegra mobile CPUs are used in the NVIDIA Shield and the Nintendo Switch and are based on ARM designs. ARM doesn't manufacture any chips itself, licensing out its designs and instruction sets to others. So regulatory agencies, start your engines. Uh, yeah, if this ends up being true, it's going to be very difficult for NVIDIA to convince the industry and the regulators uh, that it should have control of what right now is the premier CPU design provider. Uh, and, and the thing about ARM is, like, like Lamar said, they don't make any CPUs. They just license their designs and their instruction sets to people. Uh, we did a great episode of this on Know A Little More, knowalittlemore.com if you want to get into it. But they basically don't make anything. And so they can sort of be above the fray. But if NVIDIA does make uh, GPUs, but even CPUs, and now they own ARM, they're going to be some fears that, you know, maybe they'll keep the best instruction set developments for themselves. Maybe they won't license with all the competitors on on the best terms. Uh, and that that's, that's going to be a difficult one uh, for them to pass. I totally get why NVIDIA would want them. Uh, I, I'm curious how they think they can pass regulatory review. Maybe because... I don't know. There were congressional hearings with other companies. <laughs> you know, NVIDIA's like, now's the time. Let's strike. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if it's like, <laughs> while they're looking the other way, we can we can get it past them. I, I, regular, regular, I, regulatory I can agencies don't do that, that way. Yeah, yeah go they, ahead, Russ. If they decide, if, if the regulatory agencies decide to go forward and let it to happen, it'll be under a bunch of stipulations, uh, basically ensuring that it cannot uh, uh basically seal off arms licensees like mm -hmm. apple is a is, has a license in perpetuity with with arm and they mostly just use the arm instruction set and they actually they they clean sheet up their actual silicon so it could be something like that i mean and nvidia has been very hard uh on getting their uh uh getting their business away just away f strictly from gpus but rather doing uh more investments and more uh strategic uh, uh, growth in server markets. Yeah, both with GPUs, uh, and they would like to get more CPUs into server markets. Buying ARM is a way for them to do that. Yeah, they would have to, you're right, Roger, they would have to agree to some sort of shield, like making ARM a wholly owned subsidiary and agreeing to restrictions on how NVIDIA's licensing of ARM technology would work internally and that they could never shut it off uh, from other licensees, et cetera. So, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if that actually goes through. All right. Australia announced its draft code of conduct to require Google and Facebook to pay news publishers for some use of their content. We talked about this coming. Now it's here. News companies in Australia would have under this plan three months to negotiate over content that appears 
in search results, not just Google News, search results and news feeds. That's probably pertaining to Facebook. After the three months, if they can't reach an agreement, the Australian Communications and Media Authority would arbitrate and come up with a compulsory binding decision within 45 days. The code also requires companies to notify news companies of any changes they make to their algorithm 28 days in advance, provide detail on how users interact with news content on their platform, improve moderation tools to let comments be turned off, that one particularly for Facebook, and label original reporting when some company is not just passing along the same news as everybody else, but dug it up themselves. Breaches of these agreements could result in fines of 10 million Australian dollars per breach or up to 10% of a company's local turnover. The code right now only applies to Google and Facebook by name. It could be extended to other companies in the future. They've left themselves that option. But right now, it's just Google and Facebook. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission created the Code of Conduct, which will now go into a month-long consultation period. And then after that, it'll go to Australia's parliament to be debated and potentially made into law. Facebook says it will consider removing news from its platform if the code is imposed. Remember, this isn't about you posting a link. This is about Facebook hosting news, which they do for a lot of publishers. Facebook says, you know, it wouldn't hurt us if we did that. We could just get rid of that function altogether. Google, on the other hand, would have to turn off all Australian news content in its Australian search engine in order to avoid uh, complying with this code. They really tried to tighten it up. Remember, Spain tried to put in a law that said you have to pay for news and you can't just not pay for news. You have to pay for it. And Google got rid of Google News because that Spanish law only applied to the Google News product. Here, Australia tried to tighten the news a little and saying this applies to search just in general. Uh, so this is going to be a lot harder for Google to evade. Well, uh, and also, the oh, go ahead, Lamar. Oh, this will be really quick. I, I, I'm mixed with this one because I feel like they're, gonna, they're, they're shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. If, if the news, if the news companies are really the ones pushing this, pushing for this law, come on, turning off Google search is your your traffic is dead. Well, your, and, but it also hurts Google right? to do that, right? So they they tried Google, to make the law. The more. Yeah. They could they tried to make the law so that Google wouldn't do that. It would make them have to have an extreme thing. I think it's more possible that Facebook just says, yeah, fine, we won't host any news anymore. Uh, and that would also hurt Australian publishers. Yeah. You know, I don't know, how, I mean, all companies are different and Google and Facebook obviously have large teams dedicated to a variety of d different algorithms. Um, it does seem a little insane to me that a news company, let's just say that both Google and Facebook said, okay, we'll play by your rules. We will notify you to any changes to our algorithm 28 days ahead of time. I mean, I don't, I don't know that companies spend 28 days changing algorithms. You know, th that is, that is quite a bit of lead time to explain to an organization who may or may not even understand your intentions, uh, you know, or, or misinterpret the intentions. Uh, that's a, that's a strange communication window. It's basically saying once you've got your algorithm changed, you can't put it in place for 28 days. You have to tell the publishers so they can ad adapt to it. It doesn't mean that you can't put it out there. You just have to give the publishers a chance to adjust because it's going to change their ranking in mm. the search. But I don't know that you know what effect it's going to have until it's out there usually anyway, so I don't know. Um, yeah, you're right. I don't know, Lamar. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe you're right. Maybe they just will look at uh, the list of publishers, because not every publisher is on this. You have to have a certain amount of revenue. You have to have a certain kind of news that's in the public service. Public broadcasters are not part of this, only private broadcasters. Yeah. Uh, and so it'd be easy for Google to just make a list and say, great, yeah, we will just not index any of those sites. Yeah. Uh, some more news coming out of Netflix. The company is rolling out playback speed controls on its Android app. So the speed controls are available on downloaded titles saved for offline viewing. You can choose to stream at uh, half X, <laughs> 0.75X, or go faster with 1.25X or 1.5X. Pitch correction will keep voices sounding normal, so it's not going to be sped up chipmunk style. And captions will keep in time as well. And you have to choose it for each video that you want to watch. The feature launches August 1st and will roll out to everybody worldwide over the coming weeks. Both the National Association of the Deaf and the National Federation of the Blind commended Netflix on adding the playback features. Netflix plans to test the feature on iOS and the web, but not on TV versions of the app at this time. 
Yeah, this was interesting about the uh, Association for the Deaf and Federation of the Blind, because uh, for deaf users, it's the idea that you can slow down uh, a captioning to be able to make sure you don't miss anything. For blind oh, users, okay. I didn't realize this, it's the ability to speed up that's desirable because uh, a lot of blind users prefer to listen faster because they're like, it's just too slow when I'm just hearing it. Uh, and and so that that is useful for blind users to be able to speed it up. Well, you just ruined me having something snarky to say about this. I can't, I can't, I can't say anything bad about it because you know, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a, a bad person. No, go no, ahead, just, Lamar. Uh, no, absolutely <laughs> not. It's, it's I, a great. I, I am. I'm pretty curious, Lamar. Like, where are we gonna go with it? How dare Netflix think that anyone cares about speeding up content? What? <laughs> It was just, it was just my thought of TV shows. I, I just I've never used a feature, right? I know YouTube has yeah. it. I've just never used a feature of speeding up video because again that chipmunk effect. Uh, and I, I know they they said they're gonna get rid of it here. It just it, I don't know. I just I've never never had a need to do it or slow it down. So it just feels weird. But n now that I know it's for accessibility, I'm all for it. Well, and you know, and and I'm with you. I've never slowed down or sped up a pie. You know, I've I've tried just to see what it sounds like, and I go, oh no, I want it to be normal. But a lot of people, you know, even people who listen to Daily Tech News Show or Daily Tech Headlines, are like, you know, we you know we love your voices, but you know we just want to get through it a little bit quicker than the half hour that you give us. And so hmm. it is actually a widely used feature. So you know, yeah. Netflix with its huge library is you know getting in the mix at least on yeah. the Android. App. I mean, I, I speed up podcasts. Every day, I I I don't do. remember the last yeah. time I listened to a podcast at regular speed. I never speed up video either. So uh, I'm curious if you're deaf, blind, or otherwise, and and you speed up or slow down uh, video. We'd love to hear from you. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. And folks, if you want to get the tech headlines each day, if you're like sometimes I just don't have 30 minutes, I only have five. We got something for you. Daily Tech Headlines. Go subscribe. Dailytechheadlines.com. Reuters sources say ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, is considering listing its business in either Hong Kong or Shanghai. Sounds like they're leaning towards Hong Kong. Uh, the sources also say it plans to list TikTok separately. So they would issue public stock for ByteDance, but issue public stock for TikTok as well. And that listing would happen in either the Europe or the United States. The Europe. In either Europe or the United mm -hmm. States. Meanwhile, Bloomberg sources say that the United States, maybe later on Friday, might announce an order for ByteDance to divest its ownership of TikTok. And you're like, how could they do that? The US Committee on Foreign Investments in the United States uh, looks at acquisitions and evaluates whether they harm US security. So this is different from the FEC, the FTC, all of that. Uh, they'll often look at acquisitions after the fact, and they have uh, reportedly been reviewing ByteDance's acquisition of Musical.ly, uh, which became TikTok, because TikTok has an office in Santa Monica. So it's under the purview of, oh, this is a partly U.S. operation. Uh, so we can review and find out if that acquisition should have been allowed. The New York Times, Bloomberg, and Fox Business, all reporting, and others are now too, that Microsoft is in talks to acquire TikTok. So instead of listing it on the stock exchange, maybe because of this order, ByteDance will just sell it off. And Microsoft is potentially the company that will buy TikTok. Reuters previously reported that Sequoia and the Atlantic Group uh, were interested as well. Uh, so we don't know if things have changed or if just Microsoft jumped in on the game, but I don't know, by, by next week, we might have a deal that Microsoft is gonna take TikTok. <laughs> I don't, Tom. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> like, like this, this is this is crazy. Hey, listen. Yeah, I'm a I'm a social media guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not heavy on TikTok, but I know people who make their livings and business off this. So they've been on edge, wondering about how this is going. You know, this is going to happen. And my first glance, I'm like, yeah. How can the president or this our government just order a company to? Uh, we own you now. That that I'm glad you explained it because that that was very confusing uh for me um and and, and yeah and then just having an, another powerhouse of of a company like microsoft like coming in to to take it over and it just seemed like you know okay aren't you gonna have the same issues though like just big big tech owning all it feels like we're going in circles here owning all the data they they literally were just on capitol hill about that so 
Um, that's why I'm just lost. This is this is just such a weird. This happened in like an hour, right? All of this start coming in. I'm just so confused. Yeah, I mean, just over the past few hours uh, on Friday morning, uh, all of this yeah. stuff w was breaking, uh, and I think that from the administration's point of view, all they care about is TikTok, which is hugely popular in the United States. Uh, and like you said, like all social media apps collects a lot of data about you is not in the hands of a Chinese company. Uh, I, th I, my, I don't know this for sure. My suspicion is they just don't like that it's that popular and in the hands of, of a non-US company. Uh, well, and this would be a way to change that, right? I'll to go, say, I'll go, oh, go sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'll go a little further, and, and this, because you know, not, not conspiracy theory, but you know, TikTok users made a made a splash at at that at that what's that Tulsa rally? What, was yeah, it? no, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I well, don't it, think it, that it, has. It could be some revenge things happening there, maybe. I don't think that has much to do with it. It might have something to do with the president being even more eager to do this. But there are plenty of policy reasons to do this from people who don't really care about that one way or the other, but don't like China. Uh, having that. So I, I don't think it's wrong to bring it up, certainly. I, I think it's overplayed how much of, of an effect that has on this. When If that had never happened, I think it's still, I think they would still be after yeah. TikTok. I, 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 do. I worry about, and again, this is this is treading on political ground here a little bit, but I, I, I worry about the vilification of you know, just, you know, Asia and China in, in general. Like we, 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 mm -hmm. we're starting to get into the, some some dangerous territory here where it's like just because something's from China is bad, you know. And, and I I really I've never liked that thought process. My, my, it's honest, fine most, most if it's from stuff... China as long as it's not popular. That seems to be the evidence, right? Okay. One Plus, which is a Chinese company, can sell stuff all day long. Uh, Lenovo is double headquartered, partly in the United States, partly in China. Uh, so that gives it a pass. But if you're popular and you're in China. Uh, there's a target on your back from the United States, right or wrong. You're 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 right, Lamar. But it's it's Huawei, it's ZTE, and now it's TikTok, and now it's ByteDance, actually, uh, and not TikTok. So, um, yeah, I I don't know if I going back to your thought about Microsoft. I I don't know if I like the idea of this going to Microsoft as the solution. I, I almost prefer if it was just spun out as an independent company and we get a little yeah. more competition out there. You know, I I kept throwing out Turks and Caicos, but it doesn't have to be that. Any any independent, you know, exterior, not in the US, not in China, in, in corporation like Switzerland, uh, I, I think would be really interesting, but sounds like there just might be a new owner for it. So. We should buy it. We should. Like DTNS. That'll be a new Patreon level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then we'd have to make TikToks. Get they us to so get us to the oh, fifty yeah, the billion TikToks. dollar level, and we will buy TikTok. Well, I'm proud. <laughs> I'm proud of, of the whole team just now for not making any Microsoft TikTok clippy jokes. Saw a lot of those on Twitter this morning. Oh, yeah. Um, also, so, you know, I saw. And again, this is, you know, sources, you know, companies in talks to buy other companies. Remember when Facebook was going to buy Snapchat? I mean, that went on for months. You know, that didn't happen. So companies are in talks all the time. But there were also some, you know, and a lot of head scratching, like, what? Why would this be a thing that Microsoft would do? Yeah, but then there were there were certain, you know, speculation of, well, this could be, you know, how TikTok gets back into India, for example. And there are certain... There are certain ways when if you think about it, a certain you know from 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 a particular angle, you think this isn't the weirdest acquisition that's ever mm -hmm. been. No. Um, so yeah, it's uh, you know, we'll see. Figure out how TikTok helps Xbox sell Azure, and you will answer why Microsoft <laughs> wants TikTok. There you go. If they integrate TikTok into Xbox, I may just go be be a Sony fanboy for life. I don't know. <laughs> I'm well, kidding. if you have thoughts on Microsoft buying TikTok or anything that we talk about on any of our shows, you can join the conversation in our Discord. It's going on 24-7, people, and you can join by linking to a Patreon account at patreon.com slash DTNS. What's in the mailbag today? Oh, we got good stuff. Um, let's highlight a couple. One from Mike. He says he's from too warm southern New Hampshire. Hmm. It is summer after all. Mike says, I was listening to this week's Accidental Tech podcast, the host of which spent about 45 minutes on the congressional hearing, specifically Tim Cook's portions of it. And one of the hosts wondered why all four CEOs were being grilled together instead of separately, which is a really good question. Wouldn't it have been better for the representatives to focus on one company and one CEO at a time? 
Well, I went looking for an answer to that, Mike, and I think I found one. This is from the Congressional Ooh. Research Service's official paper on arranging witnesses. This is for the Senate, but I think it applies to the House as well. Uh, the paper says, typically, a witness testifying alone makes a statement and then responds to questions from committee members. Committees, however, may also employ a panel format often for witnesses with divergent viewpoints. It is normally the practice in this case for all panel members to make statements, then for committee members to pose questions to the panel or to various panelists. Some observers believe this format stimulates debate and elicits more pertinent information. So they must have thought, you know what, if we can bounce back and forth between them, maybe we can catch them contradicting each other or something. I don't know. But apparently they wanted to stimulate debate and elicit more pertinent information, and they thought the panel was the better way to do that. Well, we got another email from Nick, Nick with a K. It says, just a note in regards to Samsung's memory business and how they pivoted. It would have been super easy for them to pivot from phone to computer components because DRAM, or DRAM as Roger says, and flash memory for phones and computers is all made on the same production lines with the same equipment. So they can flip the proverbial switch and change from making products for one segment to the next segment as demand rises and falls. Ah, oh, that is true, Nick. Good point. Um, Anybody out there work for Samsung or have an insider knowledge of whether that was it? Because that makes sense to me. I don't know if it was true or not, but huh, that, that's a good point. Thanks, thanks for bringing that one up. Shout out to patrons at our master and grandmaster levels, including Philip Shane, Wandy Hernandez, and Paul Thiessen. You're awesome, all of you. Also, Thank thanks you. to Lamar Wilson, also an awesome person. So glad to have you, Lamar. It's been too long. Let folks know what you've been up to. It has. I just put a video out on YouTube today um, talking about how I'm tired of the console wars, the game consoles. Mm. And I said the game console wars are stupid. So if you feel like I do, and that includes the PC Master Race War and all that, uh, it, it's it's provoking a lot of conversation. So if you want to jump in on that, uh, that's on my YouTube, that YouTube.com slash Lamar Wilson. Thank you. Indeed. Uh, don't forget, folks, if we get to the $50 billion level, we will buy TikTok. <laughs> so go support our Patreon at patreon.com slash DTNS. Our email address is feedback at Daily Tech News Show. We are live Monday through Friday. Join us if you can, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. See you Monday. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. The Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>